Hey, 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 YouTube, how is it going? I hope all is well. This is how we're going to start off this video. This is going to be the introduction. We're going to make it short and sweet. Uh, more or less, I've got the CNC set up here to cut out this piece of wood, and this is what it's going to cut out. Um, I figured it would be easier for me to get the chassis or the, the shell portion of the amp done uh, prior to actually doing the amp itself, because uh, this is going to be the most time consuming part. Uh, note to everyone and myself, building chassis is a time consuming job. It works great in a factory where you got a machine like this cutting them out all day and a team of people slapping them together and stuff. But when you're doing it for yourself, uh, it is not quick, it is not easy, and yeah, there you have it. So uh, I'm going to cut this out now. We don't need to hear all the noise and see all this stuff. What we're going to do is see it all when it's done. So thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Hey, how is it going? Just a quick little update. Uh, obviously, you know I have a CNC machine that turns large chunks of wood into scraps that you can screw and glue together. So that's what we have here. You can see that I've got some uh, wood putty waiting to dry like that one, uh, which I got right the first time. Uh, of course, the screws are all over the place, tying all this stuff together. It is screwed and glued. This is an over-engineered box. Don't build a head shell the way that I do. Uh, I, if, I have a rule. If I can find a harder way to do it, I will. And it's true for this box here. Um, you can see I've got the slots there so I can run the electronicals into the cavities on either side of this amp here, which then of course go down through this slot here to tie the two sides together. See, way over engineered of course tolex comes up and over and then i have a piece of vanity you know walnut that'll go here and then on the inside of the amp of course i've got walnut that'll go up the sides top and sides so a lot of walnut a lot of over engineering going on but it's gonna be so worth it so worth it so sorry client wanted purple i've got royal purple tolex here I've got a line ready to cut for it the plan is, the plan, the plan is really simple. I have leather corners going on here. So you're not really gonna see much of the corner of this amp here. My hope is that the seam that I create on one of these bottom corners here is gonna get hidden by the uh, leather corner entirely. And then it'll run along the side here on the bottom. This is the bottom, of course, that we're looking at. So it'll run along here and then of course get covered on the other other side the front side with the other leather corner so when you're looking at this amp from the front or the back or the top or the sides you will not ever see a seam anywhere on the amp that is the plan and i hope that that's how it works out so if i do a good job which i'm pretty sure i will um you won't even see a seam at all keep me keep keep your prayers with me on that so in either case I need to get to work. I've got some Tolex to cut and I've got some wrapping to do and you'll just see that in more videos. So take care, we'll see you soon. Hey, hey, hey YouTube, how is it going? I hope all is well. We are getting ready to actually Tolex this thing. You can see here that I have added some blue painter's tape to the areas in which I do not want my contact cement to get onto. 
that is more or less just to make things pretty. You don't necessarily have to tape this off. You can just paint up to the edges and whatnot. Uh, having a little bit of this stuff in areas that you don't want it is not really consequential. Um, it just isn't very sightly to me to have a bunch of glue smears everywhere that you don't need glue smears. I like this stuff right here. This is the high test contact cement from Weldwood. This stuff also gives you a contact high. If you're into that kind of stuff, that's cool. Most people aren't. Definitely use this stuff in a well-ventilated area. Do not do it in your living room or in your kitchen. Your wife, your girlfriend, your roommates, whoever else lives in that vicinity with you will not be happy with your decision to utilize this stuff indoors. Um, obviously, if you have a garage or some other work shed space, do it out there and make sure it's very well ventilated. This stuff is pretty gnarly but it works every time, which is why I like this stuff. The water-based glue, as nice as it is to not cause the material to get all warpy and, you know, pliable, uh, it has like a window of time where it either seems to work or it doesn't work. And I don't know what that window of time and no one else seems to know either. Uh, I, all the reviews and my experience with it is pretty much hit or miss. It either works or it doesn't. And not working is not cool. This stuff is not cheap and it sucks to try to get it off of anything that you need to get it off of. So speaking of materials, this is the color that uh, my client has decided to go with, a nice royal purple. He wanted purple, he will get purple. You can see here I've cut it to width and I have put some lines. It is nice to have the guidelines. No, the guidelines will not show through the material when you're done but they are very helpful to make sure that you get this aligned where you need it. Now, again, going back to this stuff here and causing this stuff to get pliable, what will happen is, is it turns this stuff into a wet noodle as it expands and gets a little bit larger in area than what you started with. Not necessarily a bad thing. That makes it very easy to work with, especially since yeah, you know, you got to mold it around corners and stuff like that. So just be mindful that when you go to glue this stuff in, it is going to cause the material to, you know, uh, warp a little bit. The water based, uh, base, the water based stuff that you can get from like the true glue or whatever that you get from Mojo Tone, the water, not this stuff here, uh, won't do that. It won't cause this stuff to warp like that. And it does, you know, when it works, it works great. That's all. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So just be mindful of that. Now, in my case here, I'm going to start on the top and work my way around towards the bottom. I'm going to have the seam on one of the edges. Uh, you can't really probably see that, but my, my seam is going to end up along the edge on the bottom. And my hope is that you'll never really see much more than just like this small little infant, infinitesimal line that goes down there. You will need a glue, a glue, a glue brush, a brush for the glue that you do not intend to keep. If you use a brush that you like, you will not like it any further after you're done with this task. So definitely use a throwaway. You will want one of these. It's a little burnisher, if you will, um, or a roller, whatever it is. It's just there to make sure that you get good contact between the two mediums and the glue and also helps you get any air bubbles and helps it make it conform to any shape that you might have on your shelf. Having a heat gun is very, very helpful. Do not let your wife get a hold of your heat gun if you have one, or it will look like mine when she is done. Um, <laughs> it's just a, a, a rule of whatever, of life, that if you have a wife that does any kind of artistic work like you might do, that if you let her get a hold of your heat gun, it's going to look like this when she's done. So just saying, I love my wife to death, but don't touch my damn heat gun ever again. Anyway. So doing the corners is really, really kind of tough. That's one of those things where you kind of have to dedicate a whole video to it. And maybe I will at some other point. I'm not going to do it in this one. I've already taken way too much time on this. So what you're going to see is just, you know, a stop motion thing of me just doing the stuff. It's going to be very difficult because I do have to stand this up. And as you can already tell, that's all you're going to see. Um, so this is not something you, you need an area. You need a space in order to do this. And as always, make sure you have your drink of choice 
within arm's reach at all times. Uh, does not have to be an oil can. It can be anything else, but it just needs to be within arm's reach. Mm. So thank you so much for sticking around with me uh, for as long as you have already into this already exorbitantly long video. But uh, we're gonna try to speed this up a little bit. So we'll see you in a bit. As you could see that that is just almost a useless video for you to garner any data from um, I apologize in advance there's just not gonna be much to it so I haven't cut any of the corners yet as you can see there's a reason for that there is a reason for that now what I did do is I left this undone so I can come back later and do some work to it uh, there's a method to that madness as well. So just using a little bit of wax paper here will help make it so it doesn't stick to itself so I can come back to it and do some more later. But it, you can just kind of see it just, it gets stuff done. I don't know what the hell that is. I feel like, I don't know, I gotta figure that out. Hopefully it's just a piece of glue or something. But um, I'm gonna try to do the corners, but I can't set the amp down in such a way that you can see it. So I'm just gonna have to do it and you're just gonna have to see how it was kind of completed later, I guess. So in either case, we were all the way around. Now we need to do the corner. So thank you. We'll see you again. Hey, 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 how is it going? I had to jump ahead. I apologize. This is a very tedious task to do all this stuff here. So uh, you were just gonna see a bunch of like stop motion work of me literally wrapping this thing with purple Tolex. Uh, what I can tell you is that it is not perfect. I am not the Tolex king, um, but we got it pretty dang close. You're never going to see any of these corners here. So even though there is a little bit of a gap right there, you weren't, you're not going to see that because uh, the little corner piece is going to go right up into there. But there is some work to do to tidy this up a little bit. Um, basically, you just take a heat gun uh, and you just get it softened up a little bit the glue and the tolex and then you just kind of squeeze it together and that'll help tighten it up i haven't done that yet so uh, when you first put it on everything kind of shrinks down a little bit and that's what happens is you end up with some seams um so i've got like a little bit of a gap in there and then you can just kind of see it there's a little gap right in there so again just a little bit of heat and some time and we'll we'll be able to squeeze that in as you can see i have done some other things uh off camera I apologize, we just kind of had to get some stuff done, and this is more or less what we've done. We've just, we've gotten some of the vanity stuff done. We got some holes there to put some magnets in. This thing is gonna hold, be held in with some magnets. Uh, this will go here, so you'll never actually see, if you can imagine this guy coming up, you'll never actually see any seams down there. So let's do this. So come on, fit. Sorry, I'm doing stuff off the side here. Can't do two things at once. It's like walking and chewing bubble gum sometimes, I swear. So as you can see, that's what that'll be. Yada, yada, yada. Um, in the back, we've also done some work. Um, right there is the back chunk, obviously. So we've got some sizing to do yet still. So this obviously is gonna have to come down. Uh, this hasn't been cut to size yet or anything either. And then of course the chassis. Now the chassis is kind of a cool little thing. I went to send cut send and got a piece of you know shielding aluminum to put here it's it's pretty thin it's just under a 16th of an inch um i can't remember exactly oh, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, i'm gonna do a review of send cut send they did a great job that's all i can tell you um, i'm very impressed with the work they did and for the price it was very very difficult to beat so a piece of metal is going to go down in here and something else you may notice is that i have created a tuck and roll uh, like a little seam, if you will, for the Tolex to wrap down and around into. Now, the idea behind that is, is that I didn't want to have a raw edge that could curl up over time. And B, I just, I, if, if you were going to see any gaps, I wanted you to see nothing. On the front, not a big deal. But um, what's cool about this is that because the Tolex does have a little bit more thickness than the raw wood itself, by the time the uh, piece of aluminum goes there 
and the chassis sits down, it will just about be level with the top of this. And then of course I've got, you know, that, that piece of vanity that goes there to, so you never see it anyway. But the idea behind it is that, um, when you, if you pull the chassis out, you can pull the chassis out from the back or from the front. And in doing so, you'll never nick the edge of the, of the Tolex with the, you know, the stuff as you're pulling it out because the aluminum will help just keep it up, up above just by a little bit. So I did talk with the client. We finally got the faceplate figured out. I needed to have that done before I did any hole cutting on this because you only get one shot with this guy here. So, uh, we finally got that all dialed in. I am going to probably start burning the, I have a, you can see it down there, a little laser machine. I'll burn the faceplate in here probably tomorrow, but we finally got that figured out. So that's good. And then, sorry. All right, let's go to the backside here ah, real quick. <laughs> so there is a little channel right here that this wire runs in. And that wire, you're probably wondering like, well, how are you ever going to be able to replace that later? Well, it's made out of silicone. It's silicone coated wire, so it doesn't stick. And I have tested, you can pull it side to side if you need to. Pretty cool little trick. The back panel, of course, not finished yet, but pretty close. Um, I got it shaped in and uh, roughed in, I guess. But this is the back panel, walnut. I still need to put my signature in the back there. That'll happen later. And let's see if I can get this thing to come on out. <laughs> there we go. So the back panel, kind of same as the front panel. It's got some some uh, magnet holes there. So this thing will be held in a little bit by friction and a little bit by magnetism. I really don't like using screws if I can, especially on, on beautiful chunks of wood. So on one of my amps, I have it screwing in from the bottom into these. But obviously these aren't very these <laughs> these aren't very strong so um having a screw go into this just really isn't too it's just not really doing anything for it so i wanted to have something that was just a friction fit and magnets to help kind of solidify all that and that's what they we got so there's still a little bit of work to do on the chassis yet still um and as you can see here we got the recess for the mirror so I, i'm all about the aesthetics and the lighting aspect of things so uh there is going to be a mirror that goes into here and it will sit flush with the top of this. So this is, this channel is actually deeper than the mirror is thick. And the way it works is you put a few globs of silicone here and there, set the mirror in it. And then when you place it like this on a nice flat surface and clamp it down, the weight or gravity of the mirror pulls itself flush with the wood. And then the silicone hardens and Next thing you know, you've got a semi-suspended, you can tell I've done this before, um, you've got a semi-suspended piece of glass that's not rigidly attached to the wood with any like hard glue or anything like that. It allows the, the wood to move without taking the glass with it so much, but yet it still sits flush with the face of the wood. So that's the idea behind that. Um, yes, I have done this a few times. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there is a piece of mirror that we need to get in here. The client wants to have smoked mirror. Gosh darn, if that's not the hardest thing to find. Um, I'm not having much luck finding smoked mirror. I can find antiqued mirror all day long, but, uh, I'm still looking for smoked mirror or dark glass mirror, if you will. Um, it would look cool with this. But since I'm not doing any kind of direct light on this, I don't know how much of an impact it will make. Uh, so the idea behind the mirror is that you can see the tubes glow, right? And it would be kind of neat to have it as a, you know, not a one-to-one, -one, if you will, where the light you see coming from the, from the tubes is the exact same as what you see coming out of the mirror. It would be kind of cool to have a little smoky haze, if you will working on that one still we'll see i might have to tell my client he's sol but we'll see so as you can see wire comes out the back i got some cool things i'm not going to show them to you right now but i got some electronics to make all this stuff work uh there's two sets of leds and we kind of talked about it with this guy here maybe no yeah, no we actually we didn't so this slot right here is so an led 
thing can sit down in there. So I've got some like corn cob LED that will attach in there and the wire will run up into this. This will get chopped out and then a piece of plexiglass will sit in this slot there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. But we need a way to get power from one side to the other and that's what this is for. So I got some cool little electronicals that will fit into this little cubby right here. And, you know, basically the way I have it set up is that you get the desired level of lighting that you want from the vanity, which is a piece of acrylic that'll go across the face here and have my logo in there. You get the brightness that you want and you close the lid and you're done. You never have to mess with it again. It's got memory. You turn it on and every time it's the same brightness. Um, I try to make things, as I mentioned before, so that everything can be replaceable with stuff you can find every day in any place. Same goes here. If by any chance any of the electronics decide to take a dump on here, um, you know, with the lighting or whatnot, it's stuff that you can find on, you know, eBay or Amazon all day, every day. So I'm, I'm mindful of that. I try to get, you know, stuff from the USA if I can, but uh, you can't always win. So in either case, that is an update of where we're at. I got some work to do still. So stick with me. I know this is long, but this is what it takes to build a guitar amp from, you know, tip to stern. So thank you so much and we'll see you in a bit. All right, we are finally getting to some of the kibbles and bits of this build. Um, the shell is done. I'll show you that in a bit, but uh, I am doing the finishing work on all the walnut veneer and, you know, fascia pieces and stuff like that. Um, what I can tell you is that this is the second coat. Um, I like using this stuff here, Danish oil, this Watco stuff or whatever it is. Um, to be honest, my very, very favorite finish of all time is a boiled linseed oil um, uh, finish. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the name, BLO, blowjob, whatever. Um, th there's something about BLO that just makes wood look absolutely freaking amazing. But it takes forever to dry and it doesn't exactly have the most uh, robust finish. Whereas this stuff here is about 9.5 tenths the look of boiled linseed oil. It pretty much is boiled linseed oil. It just has other varnishes and stuff in it. But um, it's about 9.5% or, you know, 9.5 tenths of the look of BLO. But it has, you know, probably... 10% more, you know, wear ability, if you will. It's just, it's just a finish that wears better. So this is the second coat. And what I can tell you is you put the first coat on and it's going to take quite a bit. The, the wood is going to eat it up, right? You get it on there and don't wait too long. You don't even want the stuff to even start getting real tacky. Uh, I find that about five minutes, it's ready to get wiped off. And all you do is use this rag here, you know, another one, but you just wipe it off. And then you wait about five minutes or so, and then you throw another coat on. And you'll find that you use about half as much of it as you did the first time to cover it again. And then you wipe it all off again. So I am not gonna take the time to show you all that kind of crap. I can imagine that most of you aren't gonna be into the woodworking aspect of this kind of thing. Um, being a builder in the way that I am, where, you know, the shell and the, the cabinet of it is just as much, just as important as the amp is to, you know, from, that's a me thing, but, you know, to be, for it to be as important as the amp itself is, uh, all this kind of stuff here that I'm doing is superfluous to what most of you will probably do or need to do. Honest to God, you can spend 350 bucks and have, you know, Mojo Tone or one of those other companies provide you with one. It will look just as amazing and it will fit in the shell that you get, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to wipe all this stuff down and I'll show you what it looks like here in a moment. All right. So I've already wiped down the second coat, as you can probably tell. Um, I guess we'll go a little bit into depth of why I like Danish oil so much. Uh, I guess reason number one is that it's it's really easy to work with. You apply it, you wait a few moments, you wipe it off. If you feel like you need a second coat, you're more than welcome to do a second coat. You don't often have to, but I usually do just for the S's and G's. It's easy. You put on another coat, wait a few minutes, and then you wipe it off. 
and you want to wipe it off so that you don't see any shiny spots. If there's a shiny spot that shows up on the, on the wood, it's going to be shiny when it dries too. So you want to make sure you get all that kind of stuff worked out. And I kind of already did that task. So there isn't a spot to kind of show you like that. Not a big deal. Just keep wiping it. It's okay. You've probably got a 10 minute window to work that stuff out. Um, I find that if, if you do two coats, it doesn't do that quite as much because you kind of already, it's already saturated into the wood. You've already wiped it off. You're just putting on the second coat to kind of help make sure that there's some buildup, right? But this stuff is really easy to work with. That's why I like it so much. And by tomorrow morning, I'll be able to touch this and it will be a ready, it'll be ready to go. Uh, you can almost kind of see it here kind of along the edge here it's starting to kind of maybe look shiny i don't know we'll go back over with a rag here and wipe it down in just a moment so that's why that's why i love this stuff so much um this is obviously what it looked like when it first started and then it gives us this nice beautiful sheen yada 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 and it'll be it'll be beautiful so that is that. Um, I guess I'll come back once I get some more stuff done. What I can tell you is that the shell is ready for these parts to get glued into it. Um, what you may or may not be able to see is this guy here. That's the thing that holds the um, the valance that has my, my signature in it, yada, yada, yada. And this is all the internal. So this is the top, you know, and, and the left and right sides. And these here take up the face. And then this goes in between these two here, actually. Um, I didn't have space to paint it at the moment, whatever. So we'll come back to that. But thank you so much, and we'll see you in a few. All right, just another little update. So this is now ready to get glued in. All the pieces are now fitted and ready to go. Um, there's always just a little bit of touch up um, once you, you kind of get everything, you know, painted and whatnot. Um, but you can kind of see what I mean just by that sheen that you get uh, with the Danish oil. It just has this nice soft sheen. It's not quite as nice as BLO, but that's what we're looking at. Now you can kind of see how I did this here. So this piece right here is was one, contigi one contiguous piece of wood. And the only thing that you're seeing out of it is the kerf. And of course, the distance from from where it you know it sets on top of the other. I used to try to do 45 degree angles on the cuts, so that way this was a little bit closer of a fit, so it flowed a little bit more uh, fluidly. But I've kind of found that it just doesn't always work that way. And this is obviously close enough that you can obviously tell that this is one chunk of wood that has been you know ran through or whatnot. But that is what it's going to look like. Uh, obviously, these pieces here come from a different chunk of wood, so they will always look different. Now, this actually is from the same piece of wood, and it looks totally different. It's trippy. You just never know. Um, angle the dangle, I don't know, whatever. But this is ready to get glued up and fit in there, and you can see the slot there that will fit the valance that goes, I guess, or a vanity plate or whatever you want to call it, that'll go into there. But you can just kind of see how it has this nice soft sheen and it just touches really well. This this has only been a day and this is dry to the touch and ready to rock and roll. So Danish oil for the win. Um, maybe not the most robust of finishes on the planet, but for something like this, where it's never going to get touched and should never really see any wear and tear, uh, the only time that thing's going to show any kind of abuse is if it's abused. So what's nice about Danish oil is it does polish up really easy. You give it a quick sanding, you throw some more on and you're good to go. But, uh, so it's easy to refinish, I guess, if you will. But anyway, we're going to glue these in and this is going to be it. All right, we're gonna talk just a little bit about another step maybe that I, I overlooked. Um, it's probably a good idea to raise the grain of the wood before you um, 
actually put the finish on it. Now, in my case, I just take a, you know, a, a moist rag. It doesn't have to be wet. Like you don't want it to just drip out when you do it, but just wet enough that it, it absor absorbs into the wood. And you can kind of see how that looks. You can see the dry of my signature in there versus the wet of the wood. And all this does is it gets the grain to stand up and I'll see if I can get it to show. You can kind of see there, you see how those little fuzzies are sticking up? So it, it causes the grain to stand up like that over the whole surface of the thing. And then when you go back to sand it back down, it evens all that back out again. And it makes it look just super duper, goo super duper cool. Um, you know, if there's any kind of burling or, or sheen that's in the wood, this is when you'll get to see it and doing this step here will help make it pop even more when you go to finish it. So this is just about done. We're going to wait for this to dry and then we'll sand it down with, I use 220. Um, that's about as far as you need to go with wood to get a really nice satin finish like this here we'll have when we're done, like all those other pieces, of course. So um, if you can see it's starting to dry here, but almost done. We're getting close. All right, I mentioned that I would do a review of Send, Cut, Send. I figured there's no time better than now. We're, we're already doing this thing and you're gonna end up seeing this part anyway. So, uh, great, I'm loving it so far. Uh, Send, Cut, Send sends everything in a nice little box. They even put Rush on it. I don't know why I didn't ask for it to be fast or anything like that. I bought three kind of as a test thing to make sure that these were gonna work. I do realize I probably don't need to go with as thick of material as I did. I went with 040. Um, I think I should probably go with the, the next step down. I can't remember what that is. This is perfect for what I got going on. I accounted for that 040, but in either case, that's a me thing, not a them thing. Now, communication with them is great. They send a lot of communication, especially if you ask for uh, particulars. There's a little comment section where you can you know, add additional details. And one of my additional details was, can you make sure that the face area is not scratched? It is kind of a finished piece. For me, it is. It's hidden away inside the amp, but there will be some lasering on these uh, to kind of customize the amp to the, the user. But, um, so I needed this to be pretty and I wanted it to be pretty. It came out very pretty. They only reached back out to let me know that it's not possible to guarantee that there's, you know, no scratches on the main part, uh, mainly just in the machining process, but that the edges will possibly be a little rough. You'll probably have to clean those up, but you know, whatever. They got it to me. It's great. It's perfect. It's going to do what I need it to do. They give you a little printout of exactly what you ordered. So, you, you know, if you messed up the dimensions, that's on you. And then of course, candy. I found this out. I was getting ready to break down the box and I didn't open the box all the way out. I, you know, I just opened up the top and pulled this stuff out. And then out comes all this stuff here, the candy. And it, it basically kind of looks like the gummy worms kind of like font and all that stuff. It's, so it's very playful. I like candy. So they're kind of like the sweet water of, uh, of uh, I don't know what you would call it, manufacturing, if you will. So I am gonna see if doing the nameplate is a possibility for them. This is not exactly a cheap endeavor for me. Uh, I have to buy this material and pretty much bulk to get it at, uh, you know, a reasonable price. And then it takes me, you know, 20 minutes or so to lay it out on the CNC machine, get it cut up and yada, yada, yada. I got to change bits. The whole nine, it's just a pain in the butt. So if I can have 10 of these made for, you know, a couple bucks a piece, I'd be down. Uh, it was 38 bucks for all these sheets here. Killer price. I could not do it for that cheap. It would cost me 38 bucks just to get the material that I got. And then I got to spend all the time to cut them and drill them and all that stuff. So um, when it basically works out to about 13 bucks a piece for these things here, it's cheaper if you buy more. That's great. I'm loving that. So thank you, Sense Cut Send. And thank you for, you know, listening to me ramble on about, you know, things that you can utilize if you're into this kind of stuff. So thank you. We'll, we'll see you again. Let's get moving not quite sure how much value this will have. I can see it blotting out the screen. Obviously, we're just watching me burn plastic here. Um, I'm going to try to do the face plates on my own. I'm fortunate enough to have also a laser burner, but uh, we're going to see how this turns out. We're, uh, we're going to see. All right. And in about 30, 40 minutes time, this is what you get. Now, Unfortunately, we're gonna have to go back and do some things. One, that is a square. I needed to round the corners. I found that out after the fact. 
with this guy here, when I put it in, you can still just see the corners and nicking up. And I made it, I made the cutout here, the size that they said that it, this thing needed. But what they didn't tell you is that they should do a rounded corner of like an eighth inch or something like that. So we're gonna have to redo that. Um, maybe something else you can't really see is that this one here is a little bit darker than that one there. It's ran in the same run, but because this one's smaller, it goes back and forth quicker. And because it goes back and forth quicker, it gets more heat on it and more heat means that it, it burns it in there a little bit differently. Um, so aside from that, I'm happy most with how the back came out, except for I am going to do an outline next time. This one is, is like an image fill, but I need to do a line as well around that. Because as you can see on this one, it came out amazing. Something else I need to change. Um, this came in from another file that I had created. So I created this one in a second program and then moved it into Lightburn in order to get this. So that's why some of these things are a little, yeah, they are just what they are. But on the front, I actually built it in uh, Lightburn and I used a slightly, I thought it was the faint same font. It is not, as you can obviously tell, it is the same style, but it is a different, uh, it's like bold or, you know, uh, black or something. There's like, there's a difference in the font and what I need to do is go back and make, I wanna make this one the same as that one. Um, I think that looks a little bit cleaner and it's not so just ginormous. Um, so yeah, this came out really good. Um, this is something you don't see on amps too often, uh, Trees of Life and of course, uh, you know, clever names and, uh, and you know, just full on images. Uh, this one is a custom build, so it's, not going to be indicative of what I usually do. Um, EC18 is not the name of the amp. Uh, it is for this gentleman, of course. Um, this this one's kind of an homage, if you will, to his wife, um, who he loves very much. So Purple Hazel is the name of the amp. It's got the Tree of Life and then her, her initials and then 18 watt. So it's, it's incorporated a lot of uh, touches for her, which is great. So um, like I said, I'm not normally doing this kind of stuff, but uh, I will have a different name and it will kind of fit in this space right here. I don't, I don't know. I'll probably end up with a lot, a lot of empty space, but we'll see. In either case, we'll show you a little bit more here in just a second. And here you can kind of see what it's all looking like when it's all built. Now it is brighter on the edges, um, mainly because I haven't taken the film off yet. So it's showing more of that light on the edges. Um, but obviously when that comes off, you won't notice that brightness on the on the edges so much. Uh, for those of you who don't know, light works a lot like sound. So when you move sound through a medium, it attenuates. Well, same thing with light. When light moves through a medium, it attenuates at about the same rate as sound does. So in either case, enough of that. So you can kind of get an idea of what this is gonna look like when it's done. And then of course, imagine this being silver or aluminum color, or whatever. And then in the back, there will be a mirror and then you will be able to see the tubes glowing, of course, because of that as well. So this is adjustable in brightness. I think I have it readily available here and we can show you without going too crazy. So there it is going up. And that's the lowest setting there. I imagine the lowest setting is gonna be the most popular setting. Obviously it just does what it needs to do. Um, yeah, there'll be a light here, of course, as well. That's similar in color, I think. Actually, no, I'm doing purple. Uh, the client wanted purple, so we're gonna have purple light. So there you have it. There's that. Now, hold on, watch your eyes. Pow! And then this is, of course, what the back looks like now that it is all done. Um, it is still drying. We still got a little bit of touching up to do, but as you can see, it has turned into a very beautiful chunk of wood. So, that is that. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. We've got to get busy building the actual amplifier now. Um, I think we're going to have to hold off on doing the face plates until, until I get more of the amp completed. I need to get the amp done. Um, I at least know where the drill outs are going to be and all that jazz. So that's a good thing, but I just need to fix that one thing and change the font on the front of this reburn them and off to the races. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in a bit. All right, so after a couple of little revisions here and there, we have the face plates done. 
Let me put that back down there. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, a little revision here and there. I, I matched the font for the front to what was on the back. Such a better, such a better font. Um, it's the exact same uh, font name. So it's Arial. Really, it's just that simple. It's Arial. But instead of going with Arial Black, which is like this ginormous, fat, thick font, this is just Arial and no, no bolding or anything like that. And I think it looks great. Um, I found this font here and showed it to the customer and he liked that. And then of course we searched high and low for a tree of life image that he liked and that I could actually get to work in there. And it worked quite well, I'm quite happy with that. Um, as I mentioned before, this is, you know, named after his wife. This amp is an homage to his wife. So EC18 is just his initials or her initials, excuse me. And then of course, 18 for 18 watt. Uh, the purple hazel does not have much to do with her, although it is interesting that her middle name does start with an H. Um, EHC would have been a stretch. <laughs> so, um, this is actually the fourth amp that I have built. Uh, what's also kind of cool is he does have a guitar from Fender that is a proto, not a prototype, but it is serial number 04. So that's kind of cool. It's not purple though. <laughs> it's a, it's a beautiful guitar nonetheless. And it has a mahogany neck, um, or mahogany. Yeah. Mahogany. But, um, I think it's a mahogany body with a neck through if I'm not mistaken. It's a, it's a very beautiful Telecaster and I believe it has P90s if I'm not mistaken. So very cool guitar. Um, so yeah, everything's fitted and ready to go. Um, this guy here is still not attached. I still have to decide how I want to do that. Um, I was thinking of just gluing it down. Uh, I have done it in the past where you literally just put a couple dabs of super glue and let it tack down, but that is not as permanent. I'm not a huge fan on super permanence because I want you to be able to service this thing later on. And there's always a possibility that might need to come out. No, there's not. Who am I trying to kid? Um, but I'll probably use brads to tack it in. I'll probably put I'll probably put one on each corner and then one in the middle, of course, or something like that. Um, these are still these are still removable. I still have to put the corners on. He said that it looked good just as it is without the corners, but I can tell you right now, as you can probably see here, there's like I got some work to do, and I I don't like raw corners. I like something like the the mesas. You know, they have those leather corners. I those leather corners. I kind of actually like it like that. So nice, big, real leather handle, American made, yada, yada, yada. Now let's show you the backside. Um, beautiful chunk of wood. I can tell you right now, I'm never going to do my logo that big again. Uh, too much of a good thing is still too much. And as, as much as I love my brand and my name and all that jazz, <laughs> that's a little too much. So next time I'm not going to go quite that big with it. Uh, it fits well with this amp. I mean, it kind of helps break up the backside of the amp, but it's a little much considering the fact that I do have, you know, my signature also on here as well. So we'll, that's an adjustment. We'll probably make it, you know, just a little bit smaller so it doesn't look quite as big as it is. Objectively, I, I'm not really looking to do Tolex stamps, although I probably will um, offer them as a standard option just because it probably is a little bit easier for me to do in the long run. Although if this were raw wood, it would be just about as easy as well. I don't know. Tolex is great because you get a little bit of options and colors. And, you know, I love walnut. Walnut is, I think, the most beautiful of all woods. Uh, very heavy, a little difficult to work with at times, but um, I want to use colors that will contrast against walnut be it mahogany, pine, birch, whatever, you know, white woods versus dark woods or something like that. But I really want something that contrasts well with uh, with walnut, excuse me. I'll probably do like a sonic blue or a baby blue color next, I think. I have a couple amps already in queue that I need to build a shell for. Um, two reasons. One, to actually finish the amps and two, to actually get more practice doing this kind of stuff. Um, I have enough purple Tolex to do two more amps if I need to, or one cabinet. Um, we'll see where that's going to take us. I probably am going to do two amps as opposed to cabinets. I'm really not trying to get into the cabinet making business, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I know that's kind of an important part of having an amplifier company, obviously. But um, 
I know I've been rambling it on where I think we're at the five minute mark. Um, I'm probably going to end this part here, uh, mainly because there's just really not much else that I can do with the shell of the amp. Like, I, it's not the heart of the amp, but this is definitely what sets the amp off. I think, you know, it's the first thing you see, so it's going to draw your attention to it. And while the you know, while it looks good, it also has to sound good. So the amp is obviously where I put all my focus in. Um, that's where. I think my talent mostly lies at, but uh, we're going to get there. Um, and I think we're going to start that in part two. Uh, I think we'll end part one right here and uh, we'll see you in the next one. So thank you so much if you stuck with me this far. And obviously we're going to see more of this thing completely built when we're done. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.